In this video, we will talk about and demo a GitHub action or two to deploy to Vercel, both production and preview. The differences between the two actions and some pitfalls that we came across and we worked with the Vercel support team to find solutions to those. This is not a sponsored video by Vercel. Not yet, maybe one day. So Vercel, if you're watching, you know, maybe contact me. Vercel can auto deploy from your branches. So I know some of you are thinking, well, why is it you have action? You can just hit that magic button and Vercel will do its magic but we use a GitHub action so we have more control about what we can do. For example, we deploy after a release has been cut on GitHub, so a tag and release has been taken and a version number has been created for the app itself. When someone takes a screenshot, the version number is displayed in the app and that way we know what version of the app they're using. Because you know we deploy multiple times per day, so it's good to know which version they're using. Preview environments do come as part of your project. You can see down the side here, we have production and there's quite a few productions here. But if we scroll further back to a few days ago when we were doing a lot of previews, we were deploying to preview and these are on our branches and I'm gonna show you how to do that shortly. But what is a preview environment? Well, a preview environment is like a beta environment, a test environment. It's using kind of your production infrastructure, production-like infrastructure, but you wanna test out a branch and maybe get some of your users test it out as well. You might be using a temporary database or the real database. I highly recommend using a temporary database, but that's a, a discussion for a whole other video. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to learn more about. And that way they can test it and feedback and you're kind of getting that immediate feedback, but it's not affecting your users just yet. And everyone knows on a beta environment, it could break, it could change. So that's you know why to use it and when to use it when you've got big features, maybe not for your small little features that aren't so important, but if you're doing either a refactor or deploying kind of a really big feature like we're doing on the link free, we're deploying forms. You no longer have to use JSON files, you can actually use forms instead. And we want people to test that out. We wanna make sure it works properly. So we've deployed that to um, our preview environment. And it did take a bit of back and forth between a few of people, collaborating with people. So thank you so much, people like Produma, who really helped me uh, set this up, and also the Vercel team, like I said, who helped us with some pitfalls, which I'm going to show you. It's really easy. It's just one flag on the on the command for the Vercel CLI on the GitHub action, but we didn't know, we couldn't find it, and we didn't understand why it wasn't working. But using a preview environment is really important. Get that feedback and don't break your production environment for your users. And sometimes you think, ah, it'll be okay, but if it breaks and still deploys, then it could be an issue and you don't want to upset your users. It's really hard to get users for your open source product, your SaaS product, whatever it is, but it's really easy to lose them. Linktree has gained many people from Linktree because Linktree went down, I think, for like, 20 minutes or something like that. And loads of people came over to uh, Linktree. So thank you so much Linktree for having that outage. Why Vercel? We did move from DigitalOcean. We did have to pay for a DigitalOcean production and then pay for um, a test or beta or preview, whatever you want to call it, environment DigitalOcean. Um, and, and that got more and more expensive. So we actually moved to Vercel for multiples of reasons and that's one of them. And the great thing about Vercel is, is you get the preview environment as part of your project. So I highly recommend doing that and if you would like to learn more about why we moved and how we did it and how much it costs before and after, I'll link a video to that in the description below. I know what you're looking for. You really want to see this action. So let's get straight into it. So this is the preview one. Let me do the production one because it's slightly, I think, simpler. So let me show you. So we have the deploy to Vercel name of the GitHub action. We have our environment variables. So the Vercel org ID and also the project ID. They're there. They're in our GitHub secrets and this will get pulled into the action. So this action will run on workflow dispatch, which means we can trigger it manually, which we don't really do but it's there if we need it also when a release is published and we have another action that's creating the release so therefore when that completes it will trigger this one but also if there's a push to the main branch and the path matches data so any files change in the data directory in the main branch will also deploy this won't get a release in a version number and um, because it's not a feature a fix or any of those things to trigger a release to be created but it will deploy those data files that's how the profiles are done on link free. At the moment, we are getting forms, like I said, to stay tuned. But also if there's a release, then we'll bump the version. 
And here, this is the version of that you'll see. So you can see it right at the top of the project. So, so when someone takes a screenshot, we can straight away see, are oh, they using that version? That's now being fixed because another release has gone out. Now to the actual job itself. And you can ignore the one below because that's us loading the JSON files into the data, a recent feature that we've done as a precursor to the forms. So you can actually ignore this bit here. And um, the bit that you're interested in, in is the deploy part. So if it's our repo, because a lot of people are running actions on their fork, which they really shouldn't do, but just to avoid any confusions because it will fail for them. It won't break up production because they don't have these secret keys, um, but it will fail and I wonder why. So we've just put this extra check in and then we're running it on Ubuntu latest. And then what we do is we install um, the Vercel CLI. Well, we check out the code first, then we install the Vercel CLI with the npm command. And then we pull the production environment and we use our token, which is again a GitHub secret. And then we do build the project and then we deploy to production as well, again, using the, the tokens. And that's it. And that's actually from the Versal documentation. But the bit we struggled on was the preview environment. And this took a lot of kind of going back and forth. So I'm really keen to share this with you to, to help you. So again, it's very similar at the top here. At the moment, we're deploying on a particular branch. There's different ways you can do this. And this action at the moment, um, we've just introduced it recently. So we're changing this depending on the branch we want it to run for. But maybe we could do this with a label or some other ways later on to trigger this or even manually. So do let us know in the comments below what you think would work well. But then again, coming down to the load data, we can ignore this because this is specific to our project. But the part that you're interested in is going to be this extra few lines at the bottom. So let me show you that this is the same, right? We install the Vercel CLI. We, again, we um, get the environment information. We build the project all looks the same and we deploy it as well too. I think I noticed a bug. I think we actually have a deploy twice. This one here could probably be removed. I will raise a bug and let's see if you want a green square, you know, come and contribute. I think just deleting these two lines should fix it. I think we started off with that, but as we've worked, like I said, with the Versal team to, to fix this uh, problem, um, I think we've managed to duplicate that line. So let's ignore this line for the moment. I think that is not needed. This is why pairing is so great. Thank you so much for pairing with me. We're figuring it out together and making improvements all the time. I actually think why people like what they call rubber ducking. When you speak to a pet or a rubber duck on your desk, when you talk about things, I'm speaking to a camera, I'm speaking to, to you, we figure things out. So it's really important before asking for help to just talk through your problem out loud. Yes, out loud, not in your head, definitely out loud. But coming to the deployments, so here we deploy, but we also then output the domain from that, which will be a temporary domain. So Vercel will create a temporary domain. You can see it here. So each deployment gets its own unique domain. We're going to get the Vercel command to alias that temporary domain to the domain that we want. So you can see here it's spread onto two lines. So it might be a little bit confusing. Let me move this over so you can see it on one. So what we do is Vercel alias. Again, the scope, this was the part we were missing because it, we couldn't find it in easily in the docs. But apparently it is there, but we were missing the scope and you need to put in the team. Whereas when you deploy into production, you don't, which is what was confusing for us. But for preview, you do. Maybe someone can explain why that would be great. And the token is normal. And then we set, so we cat the uh, domain from the previous command. So with the temporary domain that got created in this domain.txt file. And the reason why it has the back ticks means it will run first before this actual line and command is run. And um, so that will be replaced with the content of the domain.txt. So cat outputs the content of any file and then it will run first. So it will be replaced with a temporary URL that you can see here. And then we're going to alias it to this temporary URL. And again, we need to make a subdomain to make it easier. So we've got link free. We could do preview.linkfree.io. We can do that later on. It's an improvement to come later. But for the moment, we've just created a link free preview subdomain on Vercel. And that's it. So it might have sounded really complicated, but this is the part to note. This is the difference between production and preview. Just that one line scope, your team ID. I don't know if your team ID is 
secret or not, but I definitely put it into the GitHub secrets because I think it's always better to have more things in secrets than, than less. It's a bit safer. So let me know what you think about deploying to Vercel with actions or if you use the Vercel magic. I'd be interested to know what your thoughts and are there limitations to using the Vercel magic, which is why you might move to the actions later. Also, the feature ideas that I mentioned, you know, how to trigger the preview environment. It would be great to do something like label ops. Labels are on the issues and pull requests and you can use those labels to trigger certain things like you have actions. So we could use the deploy preview label, for example, and actually deploy that pull request to the preview environment, which would be very, very awesome. So let me know what thoughts and ideas you have in the comments below. And don't forget to come and geek out with us every day in the Eddie Hub community. I'm working full time on Link Free, so I'm really keen to geek out with you on the open source project Link Free. There's lots of green squares, collaborations to be had. Link in the description below. I'll see you there.